All right, this is the cylinder that I'm going to use to lift and lower the chest armor. It's the smallest that I could find, which had the construction quality that I like. It has a one inch bore that's about 25 millimeters and the rod is 5 eighths of an inch or about 16 millimeters. And the problem with this is that it has swivel ball ends and these aren't the types of connectors or mounting points that I want because the bracket here has a hub which the cylinder will pull on and the way I want the cylinder to connect is with a clevis and an example of that is with this little cylinder here and it has this fork shape clevis where the hub goes inside of it like that and then it pivots quite nicely and for the end of the cylinder I once again don't want the swivel ball I want a cross tube like the back of this cylinder so I couldn't find one that has the two connectors that I want so what I'm going to do is cut these off and I'm going to make the connectors that I want for the cross tube I'll use this piece of one inch diameter or 25 millimeter rod. I'll bore it out in the lathe. And after this is cut off, I'll weld it into place like that. And for the clevis end, I'll use this jig that I made inside of my hydraulic shop press. This piece of steel strap will go in it. And this rod will be pressed down by the hydraulic ram and it'll bend into a U-shape in this groove. And then I'll weld it in. And once I do that, I'll be able to do this with my hands, and I'll have the custom cylinder that I want. So now the steel rod is in the lathe. Now I'm going to use my mostly homemade shop press to bend the clevis for the hydraulic cylinder for the rod end. And there's the jig that I made. Alright, here we go. Bending along to the side, but it's straightening back out. Uh huh. Oh, that's it. Okay. There we go. Clean it up a little bit with the hammer just to adjust the angle a bit and drill the holes. It should be ready to weld into position. All right, so here we are now at the point of no return. We're going to, I'm, I'm going to cut the swivel balls off both ends of this hydraulic cylinder. And I'm going to start from the back end. got it cut off the rod end pretty neatly I'll just use the grinder to clean it up a little bit there it is so now let me cut it from the rod end I'm gonna cut close to the rod and I'll have to grind some of the weld bead off because I don't want to shorten the rod if I could avoid that And 
there it is, another clean cut. So I'll just grind this back down to the diameter of the rod and I'll weld the clevis straight onto that. So right now I have the cylinder and I'm about to use the grinder to grind off the weld bead at the end of the rod and also clean up the back end of the cylinder. And I have tape on here to protect the rod from grit and debris and also to prevent any of that debris or grit from getting into the ports and into the cylinder itself. That's it right there. See the back ends nice and clean and flat, ready for the welding. Here's the rod end, clean and flat, ready for the welding also. And here is the cross tube machined on the lathe. It's going to be welded in right there. Be welded in like that. And then the clevis end right here. Finished, cleaned up, drilled out. It'll be welded on right there. All right, I have the clevis in position, ready to be tack welded. It's held up to the proper height by this small strip of steel. And I have it set slightly out of alignment because I already tried this a couple of times and it actually warps a little bit. So. I think I have it at the right angle where it'll warp into alignment. So let's see how it goes. Okay, I have both ends tacked in place. Here's the clevis. Tacked in in two places. And here's the cross tube tacked in about three places and right here I have a wet paper towel wrapped around this section of the rod so when I weld this the heat will pass to here but then the paper towel will stop it from getting any further because at the end of the rod is the piston with the piston seals and there are the gland seals the rod seals here in the gland and I don't want the heat reaching those on this side it's not a problem I took the, the this is just an open port right now I took the plug out and it just has the tape on it to stop any spatter from getting in so this could this side could withstand the heat so let me start welding it Okay, I have the clevis welded on. Now I'm going to weld the cross tube on. Despite that, I still managed to get a nice weld. Alright, if you can see that. Okay, so now I just have to weld this side. Then I'll probably put a little bit on the outsides. And 
that's it. I'm gonna let it all cool down. And then I'll show you the finished product. All right, here's the finished modified hydraulic cylinder. We have the clevis, the homemade clevis welded on. Turned out quite nicely, I'd say. And then the other end with the homemade cross tube, bored out on the lathe, then welded in place. And I think it's going to work great with the bracket that I intended it for. Slips together just like that and it'll pivot fantastic so now I just have to paint it and I can do that right now I'm happy to say that there was no damage you can see that blue plastic seal is the rod wiper and there are other seals inside the gland and a seal at the end of the rod on the piston and none of it was damaged so that cylinder is ready to go, but to get it looking a bit better, add some paint. I know originally it was powder coated, not painted, but I don't have powder coating equipment. Let me open the ports a little bit so I can close that. Okay, there we go. Alright everyone, here are the finished cylinders. There's a bit of a surprise because there are two of them here. This is the one that you saw me weld on video. It's finished. I put a little paint on it just to get it to look nice again. And the reason there's two of them is because after I finished this one and tried to mount it on the exoskeleton that I modified it for, it turns out that it its stroke was two inches too short. I ordered the wrong cylinder. So I had to order this cylinder, which is has a 12 inch stroke, and I had to repeat the process and modify this one. And I didn't paint it yet, didn't repaint it, but it turned out well. So it shows that the process of modifying these cylinders works and it's repeatable. And it was a success. So here we are looking at the back right side of the exoskeleton with the modified cylinder. Here you can see the cross tube on its mount and moving up further on the rod end we see the clevis attached and now let me move it so that you could see it in action. And back down and there you go it works now after all those details let's watch the results all right thanks for watching I hope you always find something to look forward to and I'll see you in the future